God. It's good to see all of you here. You may be seated. Brother Smith is not here. He is in the hospital. He had surgery, so we need to continue to remember him in prayer. So I'm going to try to fill in just a little bit. But it is good to see all of you here. Glad you're with us today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glad you all came to Sunday school. Amen. And as Brother Smith would say, please come to Sunday school. Amen. And, of course, everybody knows the times and uh, come for donuts and juice and coffee at 9.15 and then the, sur the Sunday school's at 9.30. So come out next week if you can. Amen? But it's good to have you today looking around to see if there are any first-time visitors, the first time here at Family Worship Center. We've got a gentleman here. Nice to have you. Anyone else? I don't want to miss anybody. All right. I know we got some that's been here once or twice and good to have have little Conley back again. I shouldn't call him little Conley, but it's good to have you back. He's not little no more, but it's good to see all of you. Good to have our visitors back again this week too. Praise God. Good to see all of you. Good looking group here. Amen. And the roads were clear. And can we get a big amen? amen. There, you, there you go. Well, it's good to see you. We had a good time in Georgia with the kids, Austin, Avalon, and Grayson. Enjoyed it uh, immensely. Felt bad for you all back here. I did. Really. Y'all don't believe that, do you? But I did. I, I did call back and say I'm sorry. I did several times, didn't I, Shelly? Yeah, I did. But I enjoyed it anyway out there. You know, I suffered through it. But we had a good time, enjoyed the visit with them in the church out there and everything. So we had a good time. The baby's growing. And they say to tell you all hello. And I'm saying to them, hello out in Georgia. Love you guys. But it's good to see you. Pastor, I don't know what else to say. We got pins and birthdays. Yes, we do have that. Anybody have birthdays or anniversaries past week? Can you come up? I know one's today. Yes, you can go. Sure. Anybody else? Birthdays, anniversary. Don't want to miss you. All right, I'm assuming we got all birthdays here. Okay. He may have to go digging deep into his pants. Let's sing happy birthday to him, Sister Darlene. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. And each day of the year, may you find Jesus there. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. And the best one you've ever had. Anyone want to say anything? They dispersed. Amen. Come back tonight, 6 o'clock, our regular service. Be glad to have you back with us. Then Wednesday night will be our children's and youth ministry at 645. And the uh, adult Bible study, we do at 5 o'clock the taping in-house. Then it will come on the live stream at 7. So let's give Pastor a big hand. Good to see you. It is great to be here this morning. Great to see all of you guys. Amen. I believe you guys have come out of your uh, groundhog holes and declared this the first day of spring. Can I have a... Uh, uh, Amen. Come on now. You're wanting more winter? Let's, how about that? We're going to go for that first day of spring thing. All right. It feels so good out there. And it, man, just everybody turned out today. It's great. Good to see you all. Everybody's kind of tired of being uh, bundled up in the house and extremely cold weather, my goodness. But God is good. He's brought us through that. Hopefully, prayerfully, we're through with that. So we, uh, we just thank God. It is so good to be back in our home church. We, we were gone over a week, about 10 days, no, about eight days. And uh, we were able to be in church last week. Amen. We didn't even miss a service around here. I think we were completely shut down the whole time we were gone. And so we hope that comes to an end. We hope that, and, and here's something I'm hoping for, to be able to get our Wednesday night service back into full effect. Amen. That's what we're working on. As soon as I get some more volunteers, some more helpers uh, for Wednesday night, uh, we'll go back to a 7 o'clock service. We'll probably still tape it and so it can be on the live stream. But uh, we are just looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to this whole year of getting back. Yeah. 
Getting back. Can we say that? Amen. I want to get back. I'm so tired of uh, the COVID shutting us down, the weather shutting us down, the government shutting us down. I believe it's time for God to open us up. Amen. 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 God's wanting to open up the church. One to open up where we can get back and to be what we're supposed to be. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer here this morning. And uh, uh, Brother Lonnie, do you feel like coming up here this morning? If you'll make your way on up here. Uh, the prayer request will be on the wall behind me. But I've got two or three that I really want to make mention of. Brother Smith, 89. Am I right? 89 or 88? 88. 88. Amen. Went out to start the car the other morning to get it warm to take Sister Smith to the doctor fell, broke his uh, hip area, and uh, is in the hospital, had surgery yesterday. Uh, Sister Smith needs our prayers as well, and so pray for them. Amen. Also, Sister Dory, uh, she broke a, a bone in the hip also. She's in hospital in uh, Cox Hospital in Springfield, and she had to have an emergency MRI last night at midnight, and so we really need to be praying for her. We don't know what's going on there. And uh, then for also for Michelle Miller and her mother, uh, set, you just sit right back there. Uh, Michelle is not in great health herself, but her mother, she has to take care of her mother, and it's a, quite an quite a ordeal. And so pray for them. Pray for both of them, uh, that, uh, that God will be with them and give them the strength they need. And continue to remember Shannon Walton, amen, Mike and Janice's daughter. And a uh, young nurse, all of a sudden this thing hit her. And she is knocked down. She's out of the hospital. She's at home. But she's having a great deal of problem regaining her memory. And uh, that's a terrible thing for a young person. Shannon is uh, early 30s, right, Mike? Somewhere in that neighborhood. And, uh, you know, beautiful young lady that just needs your prayers. So remember these in prayer. And as well as all the rest of them, Brother Ray has got an upcoming surgery. Uh, um, let me see. Who else? Who uh, else? Lucille Beckman's got an upcoming surgery, um, and um, who? Bill Weekin. Bill, Bill's having surgery Tuesday, and so all of these are on here, so be praying for them, Amen. that God will do miracles in their lives. Amen. Brother Lonnie, would you come on over? Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee, God, for... Being a, for us being able to be in the house of the Lord. God, we thank you for the weather. Lord, we just come to you right now, God, and for all the sick and, the, and Lord, all the diseases that's going on through our church. Lord, you said in your word that whatever is bound in heaven is bound, or whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. And God, we bind these diseases. We bind this COVID. We bind all of these, all of these sicknesses that these folks have. And God, we just ask you to reach your hand out and touch them that you heal them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Heavenly Father, we also bring to you, bring to, to you our nation, God, our yes. nation. And God, we just ask you, Lord, that you would uh, uh, come back into America again, God, that you would reach out and you could change hearts and change minds. And God, deliver us, Lord God, today. Lord, and we just ask you, God, that you'd be with this church this morning, be at the pastor. As he brings a message, send your Holy Spirit to light upon him and give him the words to say. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and glory for it in your holy name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Brother Kenny's getting ready to come over here and sing, but I want to give a couple of testimonies. Amen. Brother Terry, if you're not in extreme pain this morning, praise God. He went through a terrible ordeal. And uh, Brother Michael, he threw his crutches away. And... Uh, They've got these nice-looking boots on and braces on their legs, but uh, other than that, they're doing much, much better. So God is in the healing, healing process. Amen. Brother Kenny. Amen. Oh, build my man. 
on the hills of glory. Oh, I hope my mansion sits near God's Somebody once said, I can't wait to get to heaven. I'm going to look up so-and-so. I'm going to look up Jesus. Amen. He's the one that made it all possible for us to go there. He'd be the first one I want to see. Then I'll spend the next 10 million years visiting with everybody else. All right. Praise God. Amen. If you filled out a visitor's card this morning, make sure we get it back. Uh, we want to make contact with you. If you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you. Amen. If you're not just visiting, that's okay, too. We, the church we were in last week got a little bit more higher tech than what we are. Just about everybody is. No, not really. We're, we're about middle of the road probably on our technology. But they had a little scanner thing on the back of the pew in front of you. And that's how you fill out your visitor's card. You scan that. And uh, I said, well, they'll never get my information. I'm not a scanner. I don't know how, I wouldn't know how to begin to do that. But Brenda did. Amen. My wife did. She is really up on technology and She's a lot smarter than I am. Amen. So make sure we get your visitor's card back. We would love to make contact. We will not bug you, but we do want to make contact with you. Amen. You got a young lady, Sister Paige, this morning is coming to sing for us and to, just to minister to us.
Until then I live to hear you say Well done. I'd like to introduce somebody to you here this morning, my right-hand man. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Right hand, left hand, whatever, I'm here. It is good to see you guys. I'm looking out and seeing some smiling faces and seeing some, I'm sorry, seeing some not so smiling. No, I'm joking. It's good to see you guys. It's good to see you guys. I'm not seeing you, but you're seeing us out there in internet land, viewing us on online. Appreciate you guys doing that. It's good to be back in the house of God, right? Amen. How many got tired of being cooped up in the house? You can only sit there for so long and, and, and enjoy the fireplace and the warmth of the blanket and this, that, for so long. Then you just kind of start to go stir crazy. I know that's, that was me. I was a little stir crazy. You can only shovel so much snow and move so much snow around and then do it again the next day. And you just kind of get tired of it, right? We want to get back out. Dad mentioned earlier, Pastor mentioned earlier, about getting back. We want to get back, right? We want to get back to doing the things that, uh, that God wants us to do, to, to be encouraged, to go out there and encourage others. I was thinking this morning um, of, of a thought, a difference. How many realize that each and every one of you are a difference maker? I'm looking out there, and there's... There's some, some little guys out there. How can I be a difference maker? I, some of them you can't even talk, but they're difference makers. Some are a little more mature in their years. Well, how can I be of a, a difference? How can I be a difference maker? Each and every one of us have the opportunity to be a difference maker. It could be just a smile on your face to somebody that is looking a little down, and you just say, hey, how you doing? And it's just a smile. It could be you leave, leaving a little more tip at that uh, restaurant when, when the waitress has had a bad day, and you just leave a little more tip. Hey, I appreciate your help, appreciate your work. At a gas station, whatever, Walmart. And instead of going and, I'm bad about this, I go to Walmart and I'll do the self-checkout. Instead of doing the self-checkout, go to the, the person that they've got to work and just say, hey, how you doing? It's good to see you. Be a difference maker. We all have the opportunity to be a difference maker. Some of you yes. are may be a difference maker in the negative, but let's make it all positive. Because God puts in us the opportunity to make a difference in somebody else's life. And that's what it's all about, to make, put a smile on their face. I, I count it uh, a challenge sometimes for me to, to just put a smile on somebody face, somebody else's face. It may be my, 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 just my makeup, my mentality, just to see if I can get a grin out of them, a laugh. And, and I'll say that to a waitress a lot of times. I'm glad to see you smile or something like that. And they'll, they'll chuckle, well, maybe I was the only one that put a smile on their face, but I made a difference. It's up to us to make a difference in somebody else's life. God wants to make a difference in your life for you to let that flow out of you to make a difference in somebody else's. We're going to go into worship here in just a second. We get to collect the offerings. We got the... Uh, uh, offering baskets up here on the uh, the altars. We got one in the in the middle that you guys can to give of your offerings, and we appreciate you doing that. You can also mail it in if you feel free to do that. Um, also via the Venmo app, and we appreciate all of those who are doing it electronically, and we thank you guys for doing that. And, and it's been a blessing to the church. This is a blessed church, and is because of you guys, each and every one. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, and get ready to go into our. Uh, our worship and give God our utmost. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And God, we thank you for this day. God, first and foremost, we thank you for the freedom that we have in this country of ours. 
the Lord, we can stand before you and we can worship you. We can call upon your name. We can gather together. And God, we thank you for that. God, we just ask the Lord right now, Lord, you just have your hand upon this service, Lord, that you will touch each and every individual that is here, Lord, those that have to give and those that have not. Those that are viewing us online, God, we just ask the Lord, you just be with them, Lord, and you encourage them, Lord, you strengthen them. Help them be a difference maker. God, we bring our praise and our worship to you, and we love you in your name we pray. Amen. You're going to have to put up with me this morning. If you got a songbook, turn your page 106. If you all stand, please. I just told him to stand. What's a sinner far from Jesus? I was married. But my blessed Savior heard me when I cried. Then he threw his robe around me and he laid me to the bone. Now I'm living on that hallelujah side. Oh, glory be Jesus, let that hallelujah flow. Hit me ring thy Savior. Let me ring my friend, Savior's point wide. For I've opened up towards heaven on the window of my soul. And I'm living on that hallelujah side. Here the sun is always shining. Here the sky is always bright. There's no place for gloomy and Christians to abide. For my soul is filled with music and my heart with great delight. And I'm living on that hallelujah side. Oh, glory be Jesus, let that hallelujah grow. Let me ring my saint, praise and point wide. For oh, I'm open up towards heaven on the wind. And upon that street of glory when we reach that other shore and that safely cross the Jordan rolling tide you will find me shouting glory just inside the mansion door where I'm living on that hallelujah side oh glory be Jesus at that let me ring my saint praise point wide. Oh, I've opened up for heaven on the windows of my soul. And can we sing that chorus again? Mm -hmm. Oh, glory, let that hallelujah roll. Let me ring my saint praise point wide. Oh, I've opened Look at 148. I picked some songs. I don't know, we hadn't sung them in a while around here. But we sang a lot of these on Sunday night. We'll understand it one of these days. By and by. 
We are often tossed and driven on that restless sea of life. Sunland howls and Kyle and Timpton often seek with bitter sky in the land of perfect day when the mist has rolled away. We will understand it better by and by. Well, well, we'll by and by when the morning God again We will take the story how overcome and we'll understand it better by and by Trials dark on every end and we cannot understand all the way that God will lead us to that blessed promised land but he'll guide us with his eyes we fall till we die, but we'll understand it better by and by. Well, well, we'll by and by when the morning comes, when all the saints are coming again. We will tell the story how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by. Temptation get us back on the take the other words and our hearts are made to bleed for it talks a word of But we wonder why the test and we try to do our best But we'll understand it better by singing it Well well we'll try and by when the morning comes when no Everybody knows this one. Victory in Jesus. Well, I've heard an old, old story How the Savior came from glory How he came to sight on Calvary, oh, to save a friend like me. I've heard about his groaning and his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sin and the wonder victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Forever will he sought me and he brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me here I do him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing I've heard about his healing, I was cleansed by revealing how we made the man to walk again, and he calls a blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and help my Lord God's spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Well, He sought me and He brought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me here, I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. mansion he had built for me up the glory and I heard a 
about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there that song of victory Forever he sought me and he brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my life is to him. He punched me up to victory. Gotta sing that chorus one more time. Oh, victory. My Savior forever Well, he sought me And he brought me With his redeeming blood He loved me here I knew him And all my love is to him He plunged me to victory Beneath the cleansing Amen. Praise God. Are you, are you through, Brother Fred, or you got one more? Y'all want Brother Fred to sing one more? I thought they might. And my fiddle is backslid. You can be seated. The strings all fell in my fiddle, so I can't play it. <laughs> I got two more at home, but they're not here. You can be seated if you like. Well, I can't take a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take a soul that's sick, watch it wider. Love. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Fred. Amen. I hope you know that man this morning. Amen. Thank you, Brother Fred. Praise team, all the musicians. We appreciate you so much. Amen. I uh, want to mention what Sister Frances Jump, Luella's mother. I Somehow she wasn't on the prayer list this morning. She really needs our prayers. She's dealing with some extreme situations right now, so we need to lift her up in prayer. Amen. And I want to say hello to everybody. I didn't get around to shake everybody's hand this morning, and, and uh, I apologize for that. Uh, I just couldn't make everybody. But we are glad you're here. We are glad you're here. And uh, like I said, if you're looking for a church home, we've got a home for you. Come back. Amen. And I want to say a special hello to our young friend, Matt Conley. Matt, it's good to see you, buddy. Matt grew up in this church and came here a few months ago. Lives down in Camdenton, Missouri. Anybody know where Camdenton is? It's got the cheapest gas of any place around. Amen. <laughs> If you're not going through Camden, it won't hurt you to drive 20 or 30 miles out of your way to get save 10 cents on a gallon. It'd be good for you. Amen. You get to see the Ozarks as well. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Amen. Last week was Valentine's Day, and uh, we weren't here to preach to you about love, so I felt like y'all needed some love this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you. you got to put that, I've been in Georgia for a week. Love, you got to put that southern drawl into it. I love you. Amen. Bought my wife a box of candy this year. Yeah, I did. And uh, first, first year, she's gone. First year, when we first started going together, she was in high, we were in high school, and I went around and borrowed money from everybody I could borrow money from to buy her a box of candy that was about, one of the big ones, heart-shaped. cost me $7.25. Yeah, it did. About broke me. And I had to pay it back. I gave it to her. She took it home, and her daddy looked at it and said, take it back to him. You're not going to get it. Anyway, he convinced her that she should keep it. So this year I bought her a, you'd think after 50, almost 51 years, I'd have really, and I did, I, I bought her, it cost a dollar, and had three pieces of candy in it. <laughs> she ate one and I ate the other two, so we're doing good, all right? We're moving, we're moving right up, amen? Because I love her, amen? And I, that's one way of expressing your love. And uh, took her to Georgia to get her away from the extreme cold weather, although we didn't know it was coming. But anyway... I want to talk about love this morning. Praise God. If you're reading your Bibles on the wall behind me also, Matthew 22. This is New Living Translation 36 through 39. Question was asked, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all of the demands of the prophets are based upon these two commandments. Father, we ask that you'll add your anointing to your words this morning, that you'll speak to our hearts and our minds, you'll draw us near to you. We will give you praise and glory in Jesus' name, amen and amen. For years, I didn't really understand what that last part of the verse means, and upon these are based all of the commandments. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to kill him, right? If you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal from him. You're not going to covet from him. You're not going to lie to him. You're not going to do any of these things that are detrimental. So if we can keep these two commandments, the rest of them will just fall in place. And that's good. I like that. I uh, heard a couple of different messages on love, so I combined a little bit of them and put my own thoughts along with it. But this morning I want to talk about a higher love. And, and Jeremy was kind of talking about something there that went along with it, making a difference. And a higher love will definitely make a difference because a higher love is higher than the love you now have. What that means is that each day we should strive to love more. Because love is such a wonderful, important ingredient to the 
to the family of God, to the world. Amen. There's been a lot of sayings written about love, and, and a lot of them are in songs, you know. Back when I was a teenager, every other song was a love song. And uh, if I can think of one, I'll probably sing it to you. Love is a many splendored thing. Amen. And what the world needs now is love, sweet love, something that we all got just too little of. <laughs> That's my wife. She missed the candy story, so I figured I better include her. Amen. And a lot of songs, and a lot of those secular songs, there's nothing wrong with them. When it's talking about promoting love and loving your neighbor and loving one another, there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. And so love is one of the greatest things that you can give. It's one of the greatest things you can receive. If there is no love, we live in a very, very difficult situation. And um, so this morning I want to talk about that love that Christ is talking about. I want to talk about a higher love. And the word love in the Bible is broken up in, in, in different meanings. And I want to talk about two of them this morning. I want to talk about agape love and phileo love. And the Bible speaks of the kind of love that only God can give. Only, no, nobody can love like God can love. And that's agape love. And that's a love without condition. He will love you no matter what. He will love you when you hate him. He will love you when you've done against him. God will love you. Now we may never be able to reach the extent of God's love. But that doesn't prevent us from trying. I believe that. Even though we'll never reach perfection, it doesn't prevent us from trying to be more perfect. I'll never be like Christ, but it doesn't stop me from trying to be like Christ. So when we're talking about a higher love, that agape love, we should press towards that. Amen. Then there's phileo love, which is a brotherly love. And, and I, that, that means I love you to a certain point. And I don't really like that. <laughs> you know? I want you to love me past that certain point. So therefore, I'm challenging you to a higher love. I'm challenging every one of us when we think we've reached that point that we can't love anymore, ask God. Ask God if he won't give you a love that is greater than the love that you naturally have within yourself. And you'll find out that God will, will do that. Amen. Because love is such a, an important thing that God is challenging each of us. It's so important that God is challenging you. First John tells us, God is love. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. God is love. And so God wants us to press towards that. To do your best each and every day to, to love more and, and love with better, greater intensity and with fervency in your being and to love like you've never loved before. I'm not talking about lust. I'm talking about love. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. When Jesus was asked the question, what was the greatest commandment? That he replied, God, love God and love man. I, I call that the gospel in a nutshell. If you can love God and love man, you're going to go a long ways in this world. You're going to live a life that is far more peaceful than, than people who choose not to love. P people find disturbance in their life. They find lack of of peace when they're mad and when they're mean and when they're dissatisfied. And, and so if you can put love in that, you, you will have a lot better time in this, in this world. And so do your best to love the best you can. When Jesus was asked that question, love God, love man. And, uh, you know, I thought about that. I said, all we really have in this world is God and man. Th think about it. We, we, that's, that's really all we have is God and our fellow man. So since that being a, a fact, that that's what we have in this world, because usually if we achieve something, we achieve that for a reason, to please ourselves or to please somebody else or to impress somebody else. So really all we have is God and man. 
that, that person that you live with, that person that's your spouse, your, your, your children, amen. And, and that's what makes love all, 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 all about this thing. And so since that's all we had, we need to make the best of it. I thought about this scenario that a beautiful church without God is a mausoleum full of dead men's bones is what Jesus said. A, a, a beautiful church without God is not a church at all. It's a warehouse for people to attend. I want a church where God is preeminent. I want a church when you walk in, you can feel the power and the presence of God in that church. And a beautiful home without anyone to share it with pretty soon becomes very lonely. You might marvel at the things you have for a short period of time, but when you find out that 96-inch uh, television, I was going to say won't talk back to you, but it will, won't it? <laughs> Skipping the subject, get on something totally different. I know some of you are worried about taking the chip because you figure they'll be able to follow you if you take a shot. And neither here nor there, I'm not going to get into that. They're already following you. That big old TV you got in your living room is probably watching you more than you watch it. That little thing you hang up on the wall there and you say, I don't know what her name is, Siri or Bluebell or whatever your name is, saying, uh, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. And all of a sudden, here comes Elvis. You ain't nothing but a hound And it's been proven, they've admitted it, and when it's off, they're listening to you in your home. What's that got to do with what I'm talking about? I don't know. Just thought that was the information you might need this morning when you're worried about something. That's why I don't worry about anything. Let them watch me. Here I am. Watch all you want. I'm me. That's all I'm going to ever be. I'm just going to be me, and I'm still going to be me. No matter what you say or anybody else says, I'm going to be me. I'm going to be a Christian. I'm going to love God. I'm going to love man. I'm going to do what God's called me to, no matter what. And so that big house with nothing in it will soon become very empty and very lonely. And I thought about the question, what is love? Well, it's very easy to, to read about that and to understand in 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. It said love is patient. And love is kind. Love is patient. That you're able to tolerate that person that gets under your skin. You, you see, one thing about that is they probably didn't aim to get under your skin. The reason they got under your skin is because that's just who they are. Don't, don't you hate it that we're just who we are? And God made each one of us just who we are. And I'm sure there's people that I get under their skin can I have an amen, sweetheart? Amen. And, and so, we're people. We're just people. And so, I will be patient. Love is patient. Love is kind when there's really no reason to be kind. Amen. I like to be kind to people. Jeremy already brought up the waitresses. Well, I love to be kind to waitresses that really don't ask you for kindness. Yeah, what do you want? Okay. When I get somebody where there's a waitress, where there's anybody that is a little bit disgruntled, I'm going to do my very best to speak kindness to them, to speak love to them, to speak appreciation to them. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Here's one. Husbands, wives... Love does not demand its own way. Can I hear at least one amen? I got three. Not bad. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, this next one. Does not keep record of being wronged. I got an amen on that one. Because if you did something to me, I'm going to remember it, but I'm going to take it out of my memory, and I'm going to put it up here in my storage box. And I'm not going to bring that up again unless it's really necessary. 
you know, when you've took all you can take, and you know what? Do you remember when, you know? No, no, love doesn't do that. Love bites the tongue. Love lets things go. Amen. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful. And I like this last part. It endures through all circumstances. And the older you get, you find that there are a lot of circumstances in life that we go through with and uh, things don't always happen or turn out the way we want them to. And your spouse or your friend may be acting a certain way, not necessarily because that's the way they want to act, but something's gone on in their, on in their life. Maybe an illness, maybe a disaster. Why, why, why aren't you cheerful today? Well, I, my best friend just had an accident and was killed. You, you see, we need to, before we speak, we need to stop. And we need to evaluate and to talk and to be there to try to understand. We should make love our highest goal. It said in 1 Corinthians 14, well, let love be your highest goal. I, I want to love more than I want to love anything else, more than I want to do anything else. I want to love everybody in this building. And I want to say this, and, and, and I'm not bragging by this because God did this. God did this. When I was a teenager, I could look you square in the eye and I can say, I hate your guts. Woo! I don't even know if they use those words anymore. I've not been around that crowd for a while. And, and then one day I, I, I wandered into a church. And I got saved. And God took that hate out of my life. And I, I now I would say, I love not only your guts, I love everything about you. Because God instilled the love. Took the hate out. And the anger. So let love be the highest goal of your life. Many times we think of the opposite of love as being hate. And, and in many circumstances it is. But I heard this definition that the opposite of love is selfishness. Think about it. God so loved the world that he what? He gave. If you love somebody more than likely you're going to give. Amen. So the opposite of love is selfish. It's not all about me, not about what I want, but it's about what you want, what you need. Amen? And there's, there's a phrase that we use a lot of times is people don't uh, care how much you know till they know how much you care. How many of you know a know-it-all? Cheyenne's the only one here that knows a know-it-all, and I'm just probably going to assume that it's Brendan. I hate to point anybody out. But a lot of times we think we're a know-it-all, don't we? The best way to express your love, Mr. Know-it-all, Miss Know-it-all, is to not know it all. <laughs> Keep it quiet. Even though you may be right, you may think you're right, you'll wish you wasn't right in a marriage situation. It's better to lose a battle than to lose the whole war. Let's go on. I'm getting carried away. There's a guy by the name of Dr. Gary Chapman who wrote a book called The Five Love Languages. Some of you might have heard of him or read the book. I haven't read the book, but he gives five different ways our love language. What is a language? A language is something that speaks to you, doesn't it? And, and not always do we speak to somebody with words. What, what is that they say? An actions are louder than words, and a picture is worth a thousand words, and so on. There's a lot of ways that we can speak love to somebody other than just our words but words are good and when you do speak words I encourage you to speak words of praise words of affirmation to where you will say something to somebody that is good for them that's a good job man you did a good job car's not running yet but you did a good job anyway I know you'll get it running one of these days amen man your hair looks beautiful I realize you only got half of a comb, forgot the other, but man, it looks good, you know? You're ugly and your mama dresses you funny, but man, you look good. You look good. Amen. You're the best waitress I've had all day long. I told that to my Sunday school class. I said, you're the best class I, you, you've had all day long. I said, we're the only one, aren't we? Said, well, yeah, but, you know, you're still the best. 
I tell my wife from time to time, she's the best wife I got. You really are, hon. You really are. Encourage people. What good is it going to do to hurt somebody with your words? I would rather encourage them. You'll have a lot more friends if you learn to do that. Scripture tells us to, if you're going to have friends, show yourself friendly. Amen. And so it's not just words of speaking words of kindness and love to somebody, but then there's the action. One of the, one of the five love languages, action. I'm not just going to tell you I love you. I'm going to show you I love you. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, speak that into your heart and into your, into your life. And uh, doing something for somebody. Ray told me something this morning that, that ministered to me. I said, I'm going to use that. Ray's got a neighbor. And uh, Ray's neighbor's got a tractor. And I don't know about your driveway, but Ray's driveway had a lot of snow in it last week. And for whatever insane reason, Ray, he thought he might go out and shovel that snow until he realized how deep it was. And I praise God you didn't. Man's due for open heart surgery. You don't need to be shoveling snow even if you don't have that coming up. And so he looks out in his driveway and his neighbor with his tractor is cleaning off his driveway. And then the driveway next door and the driveway next door and all around their circle, this man went around and cleaned off everybody's driveway in the whole neighborhood. Now that's an act of love. That is, that is action. That's showing somebody that, that you love them. Doing something for somebody. And heard an illustration about another act of love. All of the uh, first-line workers during this pandemic, those doctors and nurses that put on their getting out. We, we're, I'm not as scared of it. I'm not scared of it at all, but we don't think about it as much right now as we did in the beginning. Am I right on that? In the beginning, you were afraid to open your front door. Somebody may have driven, driven by your house three blocks away, and they had COVID, and they rolled down your window, and they sneezed towards your house. And if you open your front door, you're probably going to get it. Some people almost had that kind of fear. And, and we're not there now. But in the beginning, the, the nurses and the doctors that walked into the emergency rooms, those people were showing an act of love. I'm going to go into that emergency room and I'm going to tend to those people that are dying. I may get it and I may die, but I'm going anyway. That's action. That's showing love in an action. And then another way we can show love is giving. Giving. My wife is one of the most loving persons in this world. She gives till my pockets are turned wrong side out. Amen. My grandkids used to get a lot of stuff, and I apologize, grandkids, you're through. We got two great grandkids that are just, man, just give, give, give. But she doesn't stop, and I don't stop with just our family. When you give something to somebody, you're ministering to them. I love you in your need, but I want to go beyond that. I want to show you that I want to love you. I've got two dollars, you can have one. Matter of fact, take the other one too. You, you, you can give, and that is a, uh, it's a blessing to somebody. And that, that shows that you love them, that you care about them, and you're concerned about their situation. And then there's a touch. Touch is a love language. Did you know that? I used to go to the nursing home. Remember those days? And I would walk by some, old, some person sitting in the middle of the... the uh, Carter in their wheelchair, and just reach out and touch them on the back. Cheers up their day. Somebody of great importance, the, the mayor, the chief of police, you know, somebody really, really important here in Missouri, the president or whoever, if they'd walk by and extend their hand, he shook my hand. He shook my hand. Last night we were eating in the largest, uh, largest Mexican restaurant in Stover, Missouri. <laughs> Big establishment, fine food. There's a young waitress there that knows somebody that I know, and T-Bone had been sick all week long. Are you still sick? Eh, he don't know. And he'd been feeling, and so she, she hadn't got to see him for a while, and when he came in and sat down, but what she, she'd go to her and touch him. You know why? She wanted to express some way that we can't say that they love each other because they're not married yet, but they like each other a whole bunch. <laughs> Amen? And when you touch somebody, 
That's saying, I, I want to be a part of your life. I want to give you my feeling. I want you to know that I love you. And then there's quality time. Quality time is something we usually think of a father spending with his children or a mother spending with their children. It was Susanna Wesley, John and Charles Wesley's mother, founder of the Methodist Church. She had 18 children. She took an hour, I can't remember what it was, at least an hour a week, and she sat down with each one of them. Now, if you think about taking care of 18 children, and, and you devote one hour, that's 18 hours that you sat down with that one child and give them yourself. You, you give them your hearing. You give them your attention. You give them your care, your concern. You, you, you share with them. And you know what, parents? You need to spend time with your kids. You need to spend time with your kids. Quality time. Not just a pat on the back on the way out the door. Kids need this. I consider myself very, very blessed, and I, my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm the least of all. But we, Brenda and I spent a lot of time with our kids. The time our kids were grown, Joe and Jeremy, I had spent thousands of hours either coaching or sitting beside a ball field watching them play. Anything that went on at their school, we were there. There for them every day. And I see that being passed down to my grandkids. And to my great grandkids, just being there for them, quality time. Spouses need quality time. Can I hear an amen from the husbands? You don't think your wife needs quality time? You try not talking to her for a while. You're going to find out what solitude is all about. Prison, if you will. Maybe a lashing. But why? And somebody said. What? what? I, I, maybe I, I, I'm at a loss for words. Can you believe that? I'm weighing my words in what I'm doing. Now, ladies, forgive me for I say this, please. Why do women talk so much? <laughs> Not just <laughs> Paige, thank you. Somebody said that. Women speak about 25,000 words a day. Men speak about 5,000 on a real busy day. Men are out in the world dealing with people all day long on the job and doing this and doing that. And when they get home, their talker is just flat wore out. And the wife has been home talking to the wall, so she's used up about 3,000 words that day. Husband, you're going to get 22,000 words whether you like it or not. Amen. And your wife needs that. She needs you. So one of our love languages is quality time that we can spend with each other. People need this. I get phone calls from people, and they say, hello. I say, hello. And then when I realize they're not going to create a conversation, they called me. So then I will get busy creating the conversation. How you doing? Fine. What you up to? None. What are you going to do tomorrow? None. What did you do today? None. Who are you? I don't know. You know why they called? Because they need. They need somebody to talk to. They don't get anybody to talk to. There's nobody in their life. They're very lonely. And when they call you, if you have to make up the conversation, then make up the conversation. And at the end of that conversation, thank them for the phone call. I'm so glad you called. Can't wait till the call. You call me again the next time. Because you know why? I said it earlier in the message. All we really have is God and people. And if you've cut people out of their lives, you've done a very great detriment to their well-being. So there's five love languages. There's another man, I remember his name, I, I can't remember, I remember this title, probably 30, 40 years ago, his name was Dr. Love. Anybody remember Dr. Love? Just wave at me, yeah, a few people, okay, you know more about him than I do. Dr. Love decided to have a contest to find the 
kindest, most caring child. A little four-year-old child won that contest. I assume that the parents wrote about what they did and sent it in. Anyway, after he read this, this little four-year-old child won the contest. And what this child did, he said his neighbor had lost his wife. The little four-year-old child's out in the front yard, and he looks over into his neighbor's yard, sees a man sitting in the front yard crying. The little four-year-old boy walks over, crawls up on his lap, and sits there and comes back home. His mom said, what, what, did you, what did you say to him? He said, I didn't say anything. I just got on his lap and helped him cry. Yeah, you know, sometimes we don't have to have the magic words. And sometimes we're better off if we don't say anything. Here's some of the worst things you can say to somebody when they're going through a disaster. Well, I know what you're going through with. No, you don't. You, you may have went through something similar, but it wasn't the exact same thing I'm going through with. Well, I understand what you say. No, you don't understand. Many times we just need to be there. Being there is more important than trying to come up with. Some, I learned this a long time ago, I, and you all know me. I mean, I, I've been there with you when you've had a loved one die, and I've been there with you when, when problems arose in your life. And my, my, my saying usually is, I don't understand. I'm so, so sorry. I don't understand, but I love you, and I'm here for you. And that's the best that we can do. And you know what love is? Love is our greatest testimony. And Jesus said it in Matthew, or John 13, 35, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. That's why I have a great problem with people who don't love each other and I have even a greater problem with Christians. I'm not making any friends right now. I have even a greater problem with Christians who don't just love everybody. I'm glad there's no tomatoes in the sanctuary today. If you don't love everybody, I'm going to give an altar call here in a few minutes. Check it out. But, but, but you don't understand. I, no, I don't understand. But I do understand one day there was a man that hung on a cross a little over 2,000 years ago and the rotten, filthy life that Danny Owsley lived and spit in the face of God. He said, I love him and I'll die for him. And he died for you and he died for each and every one of us. When not a one of us deserved that love. Oh, but yet we're Christians today. We're Christians. And we can love who we want to love and hate who we want to hate. If that's your book, you need to tear it up and throw it away. I, all of my Christian life, I say we're supposed to love everybody. We do not have to love the despiteful deeds and the things that some people do. But some way, through the mercy of God, let God love through you. You can't do that, I understand. But let God love through you. And by this shall all men know that you're my disciples. When the cold, cruel world looks at you, it says, you know what, there's something different. There's something different about that person. Something different about the, those Christians. If they're not saying about that about the Christians, if they're not saying about us as individual Christians, we need to check it out. Amen. And do what we can. I, I wrote my own little... 1 Corinthians 13 here. And I said this, love overlooks. Love overlooks. Not a person in this room that doesn't at one time or another hope that somebody overlooks your mistakes and your maybe something you said, maybe something you did. Love overlooks. And love forgives. Love forgives, and then love forgets. Why well, I, I forgive them. Don't ask me to forget it. No, because you got it stored up in your little box just in case you ever need it again to get even with them. Love overlooks, and love forgets. 
And love helps. You need help? There's a Christian that's going to help you. Love steps up and takes their place. And love reaches out. It's not always convenient. It's not always comfortable. But we look beyond our comfort and we see their need. Could, could I say that again? L love looks beyond your comfort and sees their need. Whatever that need might be. Amen. If these things are not present in the church of Jesus Christ today, then we as Christians are slipping. Everyone you show love to is not going to be able to repay you. But listen to me. Let me say that again. Everybody that you show love to is not going to be able to repay you. But I hope you don't show the love for the purpose of repayment. If you do then it wasn't really love. It was a loan. Don't anybody raise your hand. Have you ever given something to somebody, loaned something to somebody, and by this time you realize you're never going to get it back? Amen? But very seldom do I ever loan anything to anybody. Pastor, I hate to ask you this, but you got a 20 I could borrow? Well, you know what really gripes me is when I open up, I don't have a 20. All I got is 100. I'm joking. If that happened, then I was probably supposed to give that 100 And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't give. I don't loan. I give. I'll pay you back, Pastor. No, 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 no. It's a gift. Because if there's a repayment schedule, then I'm not going to see them as much. I'm going to see them in Walmart two aisles over, and they're going to duck behind the corn flanks. And then you see them on the other aisle, and i got to glass of orange juice in their face. I don't want that. I'll be okay without that $20 bill. I'll be okay without that $100 bill. But let, let me tell you something. Maybe you didn't know this. Do you know where I got my 20? Do you know where I got my 100? From the God of heaven who owns it all. He gave it to me the first time and he'll replenish it again. Amen. I got a scripture for you on that one. You're going to like this scripture. Let, let me see if I can find it here. Amen. Proverbs 19 verse 17. If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord. Why don't you try sending God a debt or a dime? If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord, and He will repay you. You don't have to worry about it. When we get all wrapped up in, in giving to get, but if we love just for the simple purpose of loving, amen. So, the three loves, and I want to end up with this, that I want to encourage you to get deeply involved in. I want to say that again. There are three loves I want you to get deeply involved with, and the first is to love God. All that you are and all that you ever will be, God has given you. When you put God first and make Him the number one partner in your life, you have just received the greatest resource you can ever get. Did you understand that? When you make God your partner, man, did you step up the ladder. When you say, God, I, I can't handle it. I want, here I am. Here is everything I have. And I give it to you, God. Take control. Take charge. Woo! I like that. You, you just made the wisest investment you could ever make. God can do far greater than any man could ever do. His investments never return void. But they always come back with fulfillment. Love God. Love, your love for God will enhance the love you have for your family and, and friends. And the second is to love your family. If musicians, singers would come. You love your family. God instituted the family as the first establishment for society. Before the church, before the government, there was the family. And it's with that family that the world will grow and succeed. I'm leaving a legacy behind. A few years from now, I'm going to check out. And, uh, but I've got a legacy I'm leaving behind. 
I've sown seeds into the lives of my family. I've did my best to preach and to teach them how to live. And you know what? Even younger kids who seem like they aren't listening to you, they really are. My, my, my grown grandkids can be around one of their friends and they'll say a word and they'll correct them on it. I like that. I like that. Your family will be there when nobody else is. The third is to love your fellow man. Jesus even carries this so far when he says, love your fellow man. Matthew 5, 44, not a lot of people like this verse. What's your favorite verse in the Bible? Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies. Not a lot of people. Love your enemies. Pray for those who, just, who persecute you. Listen to verse 45. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. When you love those that hate you, you're going to act like a child of God. I heard this little phrase the other day. What you are is God's gift to you. You got that? What you are is God's gift to you. What you become is your gift to God. I'll say that again. What you are is God's gift to you. God, God gave me Danny Owsley. And I have the capabilities that I have. But then what I decide to do with myself, how I decide to channel my lifestyle, is my gift back to God. Because when you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. There's a song, I don't know if they're going to sing this one or not, but I'm going to give you the words to it. Look for a love song, and this is the only one I could find that made sense. And let me tell you why this is such a beautiful song. It says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters lifted me. Woo! Now safe am I. Love lifted me. Love. Love lifted me. You know it. You sang it a hundred years ago. Love. Nothing else could help love lifted me. If you know what sing it with us. God in your heart and your life if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior he died on a cross because he loved you he wants to forgive you of your sins and change you into a new person if you just need prayer this morning we're here to pray for you so as they sang this again I step down front and the camera will be on the praise team as we sang love lifted me and if you need prayer for whatever reason we're here. Come down. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deep with stain within, seeking to
allá. That, that's an old, old time song. But man, did you hear the words? When nothing else could do, love lifted me. Amen. It's that love we need in this world today. Amen. And just keep hanging in there. God's going to give it to you. Amen. Come back tonight at 6 o'clock. Wednesday night, if you want to come to the service, we right here, we tape it at 5 o'clock. You're more than welcome to come. Amen. Brother Bud, so good to have you.